So last time we played, you uh, entered the Darkwood Forest. Uh, well, actually, technically, you got to Hetton. You met the mayor, who was an old friend. Newland Thorn, or Newt, as you once knew him when you were working together in the mines of Hetton. He was very happy to see you and gave you a bunch of free shit. And that made everyone happy, I would hope. Drew, mm -hmm. you paid to have your armor enchanted, I believe. Yes? Yes, I did. If that gave you a plus one bonus. It also did something else interesting oh, that God. you've been playing with. No, no, it's fine. It is now glamoured studded leather. In addition to the plus one bonus to your AC, you can use a bonus action to speak the armor's command word, which can be whatever you want, and cause the armor to assume the appearance of a normal set of clothing or some other kind of armor. You decide what it looks like, including color, style, and accessories, but the armor retains its normal bulk and weight. The illusory appearance lasts until you use this property again or remove the armor. Uh, what about the armor's safe word? He'll have to talk to the armor privately. Uh, so you have that has that. Uh, I don't know if you'll ever use it, but I was looking through the magic items and I said, oh, that's pretty much the armor that you're just paid for. And it has kind of a minor roleplay thing built in. Yay. We'll use that. Uh, from Hetton, you were you were given a task to help the the small kind of trading post of uh, Stilson's Crossing to evacuate. And when you got there, surprise, surprise, uh, while most of them were willing to evacuate, there were a few who had some issues. Their children had been turned to stone, as happens. You think it might just be... You think it may just be related to the haunted woods that the trading post inconveniently lives right next to? Uh, you'd almost think you shouldn't put a trading post here, but... Eh. Hey, the land was cheap. Exactly. They had, the, the quick recap was some idiot had gone into the woods. So six idiots followed him into the woods. Nope. Oh. And then, uh, how many of them are, how many of you are there? There's five. And then five idiots followed those six idiots into the woods. And that brought you more or less here. You sought out a, uh, a ranger that lives just inside the woods. We also, we also have a, a currently unattached, um, uh, familiar, familiar. As well uh, as an attached familiar. So there's actually seven of us. Fair enough. But uh, but Blurville's familiar would follow her instructions to fo come in here. So yes, there are there are six free-willed beings in here. Uh, plus the idiot ranger who lives in the woods. And what else? And God knows what else. Uh, you also you also learn that some of this is likely the doing of a uh, evil ancient witch lady. Once again, who lives in the forest that once again is right next to the village. Wait, which lady? Boo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wasn't me. Every time you guys make a pun, I give her an extra spell. You don't appreciate that up here in Canada, you know. <laughs> Those kind of jokes aren't funny to us. It's not even a Canadian accent, like, it's just not. It's, it's a stereotypical <laughs> one. <laughs> like a boot, right? A B O O T. Yeah, exactly. Now. I've never heard someone say it like that. Really? Because watch any show that films in Canada. <laughs> you can't you'll, hear you'll your own accent. accent. That'd be oh, ridiculous. Out. Like, out. I don't know. Out. You can hear the yes. Boston accent. I can strong. hear her compensating. <laughs> Let's not Stop make fun of Catherine. Of Listen, the, the, no, le Catherine's the less we make fun of Catherine, the less we have to hear the bird. Hey, the bird's adorable. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I think we should roll the bird a character. Oh, you now you're making fun of our birds now, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you Americans are rude. Uh, when you were talking to the ranger, he recounted encountering the search party that had left the village uh, in search of the first gentleman, who you actually had learned from his uh, journals is a member of the Order of the Sacrifice, the big bads that are allied with the orcs. 
Uh, so you're probably somewhat curious as to what the hell they're doing in the area. Obviously, allying with evil wood folk might not be good for you if they were to go str- grow stronger. So I- while you were talking to him, you guys were attacked. The, the scarecrows outside of his, his, little, uh, his little hut animated and attacked you along with these, these vine creatures. Uh, he is convinced that those are the doings of Jenny, the the hag that lives in the woods, and has no interest in following you if that's the direction you're headed. And that is more... Oh, and you, you worked out that a, a piece of, like, a bone needle that Lyle had grabbed because, ooh, shiny money. You got a problem with that? was essentially a magical bug, a, a scrying focus that would allow her to to hear and see things going on within a certain range of it. I, I, I would also point out, I would also point out, if you go back and review the tid, you'll see that the GM very specifically baited Lyle into taking that with him. That thing's worth 50 GP. I just want you guys to acquire all the treasure and gold that you can. I'm 100% impartial. Mm Mm-hmm. 50 GP. Mm Mm-hmm. Or somebody's life. Well, that's more than most of the lives we've encountered. Anyways... You guys got attacked, and uh, Skats ended up in a chokehold for most of the fight. And uh, when that is over, uh, you guys can you can long rest if you want. Although there is like a, a time a timetable in play. The orcs are coming down the mountain, and the last place you want to be there's there's a couple bad places you'd want to be. You probably don't want to be there when they get there, and you probably don't want to be here when they get there because then you'd be you know cut off from. There'd be an orc army between you and and Hetton. So is the party does the party want to take a rest? I guess with the exception of Scatch, you're mostly okay. I think I think we're fine. I mean, I still have like thirty. I'm good on spells. If we want to do, I don't know, uh, um, Borderable, do you need a short rest to recoup some spells? We did do a short rest because we used. Um... Oh, you used hit dice at the end. Okay. That's right, that's right, that's right. So you get your spells. And you guys are also loaded up with healing potions. So, okay. That, thank you for reminding me. Yes, we did end, we did end the last session, more or less, with uh, a, lo- a short rest. I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, cast Mage Armor, since I didn't have it on uh, yesterday when we got attacked by Twig Blades. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, I'm going to cast Mage Armor. No, damn it! Roll a d20. Yeah, roll a d100. Shit. And uh, before you roll this, uh, you were standing very close to Lyle when you did. Damn it. <laughs> 33. Uh, it's not going to apply. Maximize the damage of the next damage spell you cast within the next minute. That does not I'd mean... Like, I'd like me. to cast Fireball at Lyle. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Lyle, watch this. Boom. Uh, okay, you are you are mage, mage armored. So uh, you guys take a short rest. Um, it is it is you know, let's say it's about one in the afternoon. You guys got an early start in the morning. Uh, navigating the forest is is difficult. Um, it is rainy. I spent way too much time apparently describing the rain last time, so I won't repeat it. It is it is dim here. Um, in theory, if you were to... It wasn't too long. It was just a lot more attention dedicated to that than you typically give to environments, so I, I thought I'd mention... Perhaps it was, it was magical rain. In two or three more minutes, it could have potentially gotten to the point of the uh, uh, chapter in The Princess Bride describing the uh, uh, her packing, uh, which is an entire chapter in the book. I was trying to paint a picture. I won't try again. I appreciated it, Dan. All right. Anyways, it is rainy. 
the the smell it does not smell good in here just kind of rotting vegetation and and meat um and like the smell of turned earth just off-putting smells you find the deeper you go you're you're periodically hearing things you don't imagine are there and that when you confer with each other you find other people aren't hearing uh, at some point, Scat hears what she swears is the sound of babies laughing, just off the oh, path. That's... And when you and you go and you check that out, and there's there's nothing there, and no one else heard it. Lyle, you periodically just kind of freeze in place when you hear a large, like crunch. There's a large crunch in the woods, and you kind of draw your sword and. Everyone else follows suit, even though they didn't hear anything. All right, after the second one, I just keep it drawn. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, just just startling, startling news or startling uh, sounds uh, that appear to not manifest as anything physical. Um, who's who's leading the party? Look, well, who's in front? Me. Okay. But you got the sword. Yes. Makes sense. It also keeps other people from seeing things of value before me. Uh, eventually, walking along this path, uh, it's barely a path, it's its just a place where the, the ground is slightly trampled down compared to the rest of the, uh, the ground. You see a, well, it looks like a water skin, just a, a bog standard, nothing special about it, looking water skin, kind of hanging from a branch. Like right in your right in your path. Weird. Seems perfectly natural. It, 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 right in front of my eye level, or would it be somebody else's eye level if they were taller? It's taller. I mean, you can jump and get it. It's kind of just draped over a, a not particularly thick branch of a tree, a low like a low hanging branch. I'll step back a little and then stab it with my sword. Okay. You thrust your what are you what are you carrying? Rapier. You thrust your rapier forward, it pierces the skin of the the water skin, water drips out around the hole you've created. I don't think I can trust this water. Oh, I'll lick it if you want. I will do a detect magic. Okay. Uh you don't have to do the block. Uh you don't you don't sense anything. Well, there's kind of like, you know, like cosmic background radiation. You kind of sense that about the this the, the magical weave that inhabits all of the land. It's almost like it's it's disturbed here, but like everywhere, you just get a sense of like tangled knots, like all over the place, but no no specific source of of magic. The tiny whimy stuff of magic. I don't deal with magic. Catherine volunteered to like it. Does anyone have to detect poison? I don't have to detect poison. Oh, uh, Scats has detect poison. Ah, oh, my microphone's messing up again. All I heard was my name. Mm-hmm. Are you following through with your attempt to lick the, the water? Oh, okay, the water. Yeah. Um. Well, since it's been stabbed and there's no magic key, I'm gonna go and cautiously drink from it. I'll okay. test it out the old-fashioned way. Sure. Detect poison? Yeah. Sure. Sorry, it tastes like what? I taste like water, and you don't okay. Im- you don't immediately fall down dead. Well, that's always good. Assuming you guys kind of wait and everyone kind of stares at Catherine and uh, at Scats rather. Maybe has their hands on their weapons just in case this turns her into something. Also, she's a little dangerous even if it leaves her even if it leaves her as scats. And and after a let's say five or ten minutes. The most frightening outcome is that it does nothing. <laughs> uh, a- after five or ten minutes, you guys start to feel comfortable that nothing's gonna happen. That still sounds sketchy, but okay. Well, that's weird. Uh, it was one of the children's. Look around the area. Is there anything else lying around? Any other equipment? 
Uh, what, what doesn't everyone do a, a perception or investigation, whichever one you're better at? Unless somebody specifically wants to stay on the uh, trail. You know what? I'll stay on the trail. Oh, good. The guy with the good investigation and perception stays on the trail. Let me have Lyle make a roll anyway, because you can still look from where you are. Oh, 24. Do I even need to leave the trail to see the things I see? You guys are, you are fanning out a little bit, uh, looking, just, just, just staying within, having somebody like, well, Lyle's not the best person, he's short, but having somebody stay on the trail probably makes sense so you guys, nobody accidentally wanders too far that they can't get back. Uh, Lyle, you're just kind of watching, you're, you're checking the trees, you're looking over the foliage that you can. And, you know, seeing Scats take a drink really makes you realize you're kind of parched as well. And you go to take a drink from your water skin and you realize it's gone. And that makes you curious and you take a closer look at the one hanging from the tree. And you realize, you know, they're all pretty standard, but they get weathered and beaten in different ways and so forth. Uh, that's yours. Well, it was mine. <laughs> now it's got a hole in it. Don't worry, I'll swap it out sooner or later. Uh, the rest of the party does not find any other equipment in the area surrounding the trail. Do we have our water skins and other equipment? You guys can check through your equipment, because obviously that kind of freaks you out. Blurble, you go to check your, like, food pouch, where you have your rations. Sure. And it is filled with berries. Was it filled with berries before? No, I only had some more supplies. Oh, dear God. Someone's making you healthy. <laughs> Scats, can you detect uh, poison on them? <laughs> I didn't hear that quite, but I think you want me to eat the berries. Which yes. I will do. <laughs> I think you could just check if they're poisonous. <laughs> totally. I'm gonna lick one. I'm not gonna eat it, I'm just gonna lick it. Sure. Scats will uh, just sort of lick or, or nibble on the corner of one of these berries. Uh, they don't taste, they, they taste delicious. Berries don't have corners, do they? They're circular. Uh, they do once you take a bite these out of one. These are cornered berries. Yeah. These are magical square mm. bits. They do have square watermelons now. You don't know what yeah. kind of berries grow in this forest. It, it tastes uh, completely very delicious. Um, you've seen these berries growing. Very delicious. Very delicious. <laughs> uh, it also doesn't kill you, at least not right away. But it also doesn't make you stronger, thus proving that that statement is a lie. And now we can make soap. I don't like the way you two play off each other. <laughs> None of your equipment or stuff appears to have been messed with. And you guys are pretty thorough about checking everything out. I'm going to tie off all of my equipment to my immovable rod and keep my immovable rod in my hand. Okay. Nice. So wrong. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to my holy symbol as we walk. Okay. <laughs> Holy symbol. He's a cleric. <laughs> and you can't you can't do that after Anyways. Okay. The forest is clearly driving everyone a little bit loopy. <laughs> Alright, so so my inventory is filled with berries. Is it like how much how much? How many berries? Or like Within your pack would be like a, a container that you use to store rations. That that seems to be overflowing with berries, so whatever the negative space of that container is, we'll say like, I don't know, a couple cups of berries? Okay. Enough to fill the container that they were in? Yummy, can we berry pie? It's a, it's a lot. It's a significant amount, like, for somebody to sneak in there is, I guess. Can I... Dan may know or have a guess as to what's going on how can Tillman make a check to see if I can, if he can have some of that knowledge? 
you can pick a skill that you think is appropriate. If you if you think you know it's like a creature, then it would be basically a nature check. Yeah, I think it's some sort of fey creature, like a sprite or a pixie or something that does tricks. But I don't know what my character would know. So make a nature check. Okay. Yeah, you don't know. So you don't know what trees are. I think it's stone giants, everybody. So you don't know. Or, or you know, or you might know. You have a theory. I understand. And Tell you me. also just wiped your ass with poison ivy. Just saying. <laughs> Aww. I'm okay with that. That decision, that uh, consequence for a crit miss. I'm not. Well, you shouldn't be. You crit missed. You're not supposed to like it. Yeah, but I wasn't wiping myself and made a check for wiping. I was thinking. All right. But as your mind wandered, your hand reached over. Just. Damn it. Once you're, you feel like there's nothing more you can, you can glean from the situation here. Uh, you you pack up your, you know, you, you put everything back in your packs, having gone through it. It's not really a short rest. You guys just kind of like you go through all your stuff. You you know, uh, scats. You you actually uh, you let your your feet air out a little bit. Boots were getting to you, and when you go and put your feet back in one of the boots, it's filled with uh, thorny briars. Well then, that's so you, a drink, right? No. No, maybe no, I didn't hear it quite right. Like like thorns, thorny, thorny, oh. bristly sticks. Oh, crap. That's yeah. not. I'm I'm mad. I yeah. would think so. Pick up these thorns and aim them at Lyle's head because really, you know, it's probably him. Seems makes sense. Make an attack roll. I don't, I don't Wait, what, care what, what, what. what. Just make an attack roll. Roll some kind of die. I don't really care. It's rolling. It says it's rolling. Is it gonna roll? No. Nah, okay. It rolled. I you miss. Are, you, you do, in fact, miss. But L Lyle's really dexy, so... That's <laughs> why I'm around. Plus, he you probably gets things thrown at him a lot, so... I would think so. Yeah. So he dodges out of the way, but it... Yeah. And then you begrudgingly kind of trot into the woods and get your boot back. Yep. Empty it of thorns. Double check it for thorns. Where is our where is our imp friend at the moment? He's kind of up in a tree watching you guys kind of giggling. Uh, All right, he's definitely can involved. I, can I, can I him call now. him down and can I call him down and ask him if he knows what might be the cause of this? Sure. You guys are hilarious. Well let's see. His imp needs stabbing. He uh, he thinks about it. Uh, he doesn't know. As as I'm gonna do an inception it? roll. Okay. So on your side, you do an insight roll. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's not huh? possible. Huh? Wow. That's not actually possible. It is if she has a negative modifier. I've never I, rolled No, it, it looks like the formula's in there wrong. Roll, roll 1d20 plus plus. Wow, everything in my sheet has just turned to zero. Re reload the page. Oh, gosh. I'm That's impressive. Check. Okay. Someone else roll a deception check. It's, it's an inside check. And Lyle rolled initiative. I was just checking to see that it didn't all... I understand. No, that's, that's good. It seems like nobody at this time or place really knows what's going on. Leaves the party very disturbed about what they're experiencing and very much on their guard. Hey, hey, hey Mortimer, where's your uh, familiar? Can they, like, uh, go up and keep an eye out for magical behavior and report back to you? Uh, I think that's what he was already doing, or she... And you can ask uh, Pipyap to to do the same. Okay, you're you're trying to determine if he's lying and he might be the person behind it, or that he might know what's causing it and doesn't want to spill yeah. the beans. Okay, so he's gonna make a check. So not that you should know this, but um, his 
whatever he rolled, which was basically persuasion if he's telling the truth or deception if he's lying, beat your number so you don't you don't sense any you don't sense Fantastic. any deception on on his part. I think he's good, guys. I think he's I think he's telling the truth. I mean, you don't even necessarily have to like cast away your your suspicions. It just means you you don't have any reason. You don't necessarily have a strong feeling. At this point. Yeah, I think paranoia is fair. Like that's kind of the uh, the environment that or the uh, mental state that this creepy forest would induce. You've got weird sounds. Now you've got some strange things happening. You, you end up walking for a couple hours. It's really only like the mid afternoon, but it's it seems like it's a lot darker than that, uh, just because of the the full coverage from above. Lyle, you said you were in front. I'm going to have you guys set up a marching order here. With Lyle in the lead, and you guys can position yourselves behind Lyle, with Lyle heading to the left. Uh, Pip Yap doesn't really need to be. He'll be he'll be kind of flying around. He'll be flying around above you, uh, along with the, the uh, your warlock pseudo dragon. Uh, kind of keeping an extra vigilant watch for shenanigans. So you guys are walking along. What's great about this uh, setup is that I can still see down the path. The scats and I in front of me. That's true. You have zero <laughs> obstruction in front of you. Scary trees. Are you still afraid of trees? Mm, I'm still a dwarf in real life. Exactly. Also dragons. Pseudo dragon. With adorable big eyes. And her name is Fluffy. Uh, one moment. I do like when Matt Mercer on Critical Role has to look stuff up, and he looks so upset, frustrated that he has to look something up in the middle of a show. I like, can imagine know, it happens. Yeah, no, I get it, but I mean, it happens. It's, of course, you know, how it works. Well, I think one of our first sessions that we played on our on the other one, the Team Woman group, some, somewhere along the lines in like the first or second session, I think the first one. It was an area that I'd forgotten about in the book, and so I didn't have a map prepared, and everything else had nice, pretty maps. And so I just pulled out the, the generic GM, you know, battle map. And you guys very politely sat there while I drew things out, but, like, that's that's D&D &D most of the time, is waiting oh, yeah. for the DM to draw the map. Yeah, and then sometimes we fill yeah. in our own creatures and cages and whatnot. That's D&D that's, that's &D past 3-5. Like back at, back in the two point you know, two point zero level, we didn't even have maps half the time. Hmm. Yeah, and five has has definitely embraced that, uh, like uh, play either way kind of thing. The, technically, the yeah, five five, foot... five seems a lot less dependent on it. Like I've been looking into a little bit of like four and three, and because uh, I hadn't played much or actually at all of those. Um, I had missed it. And yeah, they, it seems like it's almost gotten to the point of being like, you know, measuring distance and target all the other stuff, like became a huge part of the game. Oh yeah, um, four, it definitely needed it. Five seems less required, which is nice. It, it seems like yeah. it's a little bit back to what it should be. Technically the five foot grid in five is a variant. It's not even the the actual rules. I think for online play, it helps to have that established, but I guess I would take the opportunity to remind players that you guys can you guys can try things that are off the grid, like whenever you want. Well, and it, it's more helpful to have that sort of thing in large encounters where there's yeah. a lot to keep track of and whatnot. If it's just like three guys, you don't really need to map it out all the time. And, you know, it's fun to do. It, yeah, especially I, if there's terrain issues, but yeah, I really like the way you could just do a quick one and kill them. I, re, I really like the way we've we've tended to play, which is it's there, but it's not really like a major mechanic of the game. I I, I like that; it's kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unless there are specific terrain issues and things like that. 
you guys are, are proceeding through the woods. You're, you're pretty sure you're still following the trail, which again is not as, as distinct as it appears here. Lyle stops, because Lyle hears growling. And of course, Lyle's been hearing things all day, so you guys are not impressed. Oh, scats must be hungry. <laughs> but then you, you then you know there's danger because a box with turn order appears. No, not the initiative box. Something evil in the woods. I can sense it. Okay. So something evil in the woods goes first. Hey guys, I think there's something evil in the woods. You don't say. I do say. Do you know? Do you really say? Okay, here's the negative of being pushed to talk. You guys didn't hear me scream as I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, last week... Dance for us. You just changed my opinion of push to talk. Last week I fell over, but I managed to hit the mute button before I fell, so you also didn't hear me scream, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been that earth wobble I heard about in science class. <laughs> <laughs> so these these kind of like black creatures uh, walking on all fours with these these tentacles that look like they're under their the, the control of the the creature you know uh, articulated and able to move as they desire Duck coming out of its body. Uh, yeah. Yes, you're attacked by duck-billed platypi. Lyle, you're attacked by a duck-billed platypi. It rolls a 21. Does that hit? No. Okay, so 10 damage. And then it hits you again. Ouch. 17. Uh, that one might miss. Well, if it doesn't, you take 13. All right, that's 13. No, I will take half damage on that one. Smart. Scats. It rolls a 20. Ow. 11 damage. Oh, ow. And then it rolls a 13. That'll miss. Okay. Uh, Blurble. Yours rolls a 15. Yes. 9 damage. And then it rolls a 19 and does 13 more. Uh, Pip Yap. Ah, Pip Yap. Pip -Yap, oh. no. Pip -Yap's gonna it's his turn. He's gonna okay, try to I was like, Don't fight Pip -Yap. He is going to try to uh, sting one of these things. And Pip -Yap rolls a twelve, which is not going to hit. Venorn. Um Yeah. <sighs> yeah. The, the, the way we were attacked basically makes everything that I've got pointless. Um, I'm just going to do a level two magic missile into the one attacking Burble. Okay, 16. Uh, your your magical energy sinks into its what appears to be a very tough hide on it. Uh, stats. Yeah. Not, not yes. a good day. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna hit it with my great axe, because... You're going to miss. Going to... Going to miss it? You do. As you swing your sword... Holy crap, okay. As you swing your axe down, it almost feels as if it passes... You, you see it make contact with its body, but it passes through. Well then, that's fun. Good to know. Okay. Do you get a second attack? Oh, yes, I do. Um, you don't have to take okay. it, but... No, I know, I'm just, I'm just thinking, because if a 21 does not hit it, then not much else is going to hit it. And I can't really do much except for smack it. Um, oh, well, I guess I'll try and... You can't do anything else at this point, because it's... You can't really switch weapons. No, I know. Like in the middle of a fight. Like isn't, isn't your great axe magic? Yes, my great axe is magic. And it missed to the 21. Okay, I'm freaked out. Yeah, no, me too. Okay. 
Go make an attack with your great axe. You hit. I hit. What? Hmm. This time you feel like you made contact, and it lurch. It, it kind of lurches back in pain a bit. A bit. Great. Fifteen. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Tillman. Okay. I am going to use one of my special beads. Now, how does this work? It says cure wounds. Is it as if I'm casting it, or is it in and of itself? It can be It can be your casting, so it'll benefit from your bonuses. My bonuses? Okay, because it says uh, cure wounds as second level. So as if you cast the second level cure wounds. I'm not sure if that's correct, but it's correct in my world, so... Awesome. It's it's not too many more points of healing. What I will say, I'm gonna, scotch. I'm gonna give you the. I'm gonna say because you're not technically casting it, like you're just channeling its existing energy, and I believe that use of those beads is a bonus action. It is a bonus action. Yes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that does not count as your spell for the turn. So you can nice. do you can do that, and then you, you'll still be free to cast something of your own accord as well. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, there. It, it's a very cleric appropriate magic item, but you can bump it up a little bit. And that may be the correct interpretation. I just, I don't know. And I'm not going to stop and look it up. So Scats gets 16 hit points mm -hmm. back. Thank you. Uh, Scats, you've been accused by the chat room of being a very calm barbarian. Wow. Well, it's hard oh. to be angry when I'm only catching, like, every other word. And Canadian. And Canadian, you know? Alright, 16 back I don't think I have an angry voice. And I'm going to Sacred Flame the one uh, by Skets. Oh, I am Will Wheaton tonight. Well, it passes anyways. Okay, I think that exhausts you of... I am exhausted. Uh, Blurble. Uh, I'm going to disengage and move away a little bit, because I'm at two. Lyle! Okay. I'm going to do the rapier to the wolf. To Not the wolf thing's face. Sure. Oh. 20 hits. Yeah, that will hit. And I'm very upset no one else threatens this with me. So I'm gonna use my rogue ability to uh, withdraw and step back. Okay. It's going to turn and close the distance because you only moved five feet. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to attack you. That's fine, but next time I attack it, stats threatens too. I get my sneak attack. Okay, it rolls a 21. That's a miss. And does 11 damage. I take half. And then it crits you. God damn it, I picked the wrong one. Uh, and does 25. Oh, look, nap time. <laughs> it is then going to bolt into the woods. Uh, Sketch, you're going to... Uh, actually, I guess before I do that, Sketch, you get an opportunity attack as it does. Oh, fantastic. Because Lyle did move back, so... Okay, you gotta tell me a 26 hits. It hits. Okay, I'm gonna reroll damage though. For nine. Okay, and it, it is prevented from moving. Oh, oh. Uh, the one in front of you is going to attack you. It rolls a 16. That's gonna hit. For 10. Okay, not too bad. And then it rolls a 22. That's also gonna hit. For 14 more. What's so that? This. Then somebody's house is going to be set on fire. Uh, that's mine. My dad burnt pizza, like, an hour ago. <laughs> and it's only just apparently set off. I think we'll wait till it's done. I'm going to... Okay, that seems like it's done. Venoran, you're going to get a tentacle attack. Uh, only rolls a 13. Oh. And then it's going to send one of its tentacles to hit Blurble. Rolls a 12. So inappropriate. And then it's going to uh, turn and it's going to run into the woods. Venorn, 
You get to make an opportunity attack. Uh, fireball. Can I do that? I don't believe you can because there's a feat that lets you do it. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I so, guess. Why? I, I guess I have a weapon. Hold on. Ah, it says I have a dagger. Yeah, you can make an attack with a dagger. Ah, ah that, that doesn't hit. So it's going to disappear into the woods. Pipyap is going to try and attack the one next to Scats. Oh, it's gonna he's gonna hit. And it's going to make a con save because Pipyap is poisonous. It's going to pass that, but it's still gonna take six damage from Pipyap. Venorn. Um uh, Fireball on the one north of Scats. That was not the right spell. Hold on. Oh, good. That's the one. Much better. It misses. Okay. So anyway, they phase in and out. So, Venoran just missed it with his firebolt. Uh, Skets. Okay. Smash the one that I'm facing. That will hit. Oh, nice. I'm going to roll the damage. Seven. Okay. And then I'll hit it again. That's probably not going to hit. That's going to miss. Yeah. Tillman. Oh, all that healing I just did, and you just lost it, Skets. Yeah, I know. It, it it ate me. No, it didn't. It's not a wolf. It tentacled me? That doesn't sound very good. That's right. so much worse. <laughs> Everything you just said should not have been said. Just <laughs> went to a weird anime place. <laughs> just no... Lyle down? Yeah. Oh, Lyle. Jeez. Everyone <laughs> resting on the ground. All right. Um, Lyle, how far? How many hit points below half are you? All of them. I understand. He needs the number. Fifteen. And Skets? Uh, how much below half? That's twenty-three, so ten. Okay. Uh, Skets gets ten. Lyle gets fifteen. Yeah. That was an action, so I will do a uh, a healing word on Blurble. Thank you. <laughs> Nine hit points. And that brings us to Blurble. I will use Eldritch Blast on the one uh, north of Scats. That is going to miss. Oh. An eight misses. Uh, Lyle, you are up. You're on the ground. You can stand up, though. I stand up and I dash over here. And I can't attack. Can I? Why not? All right. Attack the wolf. I cr- oh, oh wow. Crushed it. I, I crit it. I do 19 and 22 damage. All right, you, you land a pretty critical blow on this thing. I'm going to stop failing right now and... Well, maybe. I mean, my it's his turn. It's its turn, so don't go too far into your macros. You might want to be, up, be next to your hit points because it's going to try to tentacle you. Rolls a 9. No. And then it's going to try to hit you again. It rolls a 15. Yes. And then it's going to dash into the woods, but you get to make an opportunity attack. Yay. 25. That will hit. Yay. One. Hold on. You still, you still aren't. You told me not to go too far, so ten damage, and that's going to stop him. So he's not going to move. So Scats doesn't get the opportunity attack because his. Once you take, I believe, once you take a hit in an opportunity from from an opportunity attack, it stops your movement, which means Scats wouldn't have got. Hey, hey, screw it, Scats, make an opportunity attack. Crush mash, the fifteen hit. Uh. Nope. Okay, I'm really confused as to what hits and what doesn't. This is annoying. I wonder if they're ethereal or something, and so it, there's a percentage chance or something. Ooh, Maybe. smart cleric gets a tentacle. Or shadowy or something. I'm trying to decide if he's rolling to see if it hits, or if it's like odd numbers ending in the right letter or something. Well, the good news, uh, Tillman, is that the the first attack missed you. The bad news is the second one crit you. 
Four. Twenty-five. Wow, Ouch. that's a lot of my hit points. That's why the other one's going to scats. Uh, twenty-five. It's going to do seven damage to scats. Wow. Uh, okay. That's a significant difference in damage. Lucky me. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm happy you only took seven. <laughs> The one that had previously run away is now going to charge out of the woods and come up behind Blurble. Oh no. And attack you twice. 14. A 14 is exactly the right number. So that hits. So that's that's 15, and I guess there's no... You're now. Yep. Uh, and then it's going to move up and attack Venorin. Yeah. With a 19 and do four, yeah, that's a hit. 14 damage. Wow. Uh, Pipyap is going to try to sting the one north of Scats. And he's going to miss. Venorin. Um, I'm going to cast Levitate. How high does that put you in the air? 20 feet. Okay. You haven't seen them attack her, anything that her, far. Her turn. Right, okay. So Renorin is flying. Well, it's times like these, you kind of wish you were back in the mine. Scats. Hey! Smash it. 22, does that hit? No. Oh, okay. 15 doesn't hit. 21 doesn't hit. 22 doesn't hit. If it's going by the numbers. But 25 hits. And 13 hits. And 26 my 20, hits. My 25 missed, so... But a 25 that Lyle did hit. So it's not hey. numbers. So it must be a... Get another a attack. Percentage kind of thing. It's a 22 again. You hit. Okay, well, I'm going to reroll the damage. See if I can get higher. 14. Okay, okay. Tillman. Um, I'm generally unhappy with the situation I'm in right now. I'm going to do Mass Healing Word. Uh, how are Fluffy or uh, Yip, Yip Yap or whatever his name is? Uh, Pip Yap's been uh, diving in and stinging and then moving out of range. Uh, kind of doing... <laughs> I, I think Venoran's more or less copying Pip Yap's tactic. Uh, okay, and, so and Fluffy's been don't... circling overhead. I think I think you... Blurble, I do think you can have your... I'll have to look up how Familiars work. I believe it can attack. Oh, no, no. Familiars can't attack. Something so else. A familiar can attack as her attack. It's not an additional one, though. It's like either she can go or her familiar can go one or the other. Okay. Everyone gains 11 hit points. Yay! Hit points. And. I love hit points. You're pretty much made of hit points. Yeah, pretty much. Feel free to answer this. I can't tell you. But. When they hit, there's obviously some other mechanic going on. Would Bless affect that mechanic at all? Bless would make it more likely for your hits to land. Well, that's what it already does. But I'm asking... Yes. But it also would affect that me that hidden mechanic that we're dealing with. It will make your attacks more likely to hit. Okay. <laughs> it will do what it says on the piece of paper. Yes. <laughs> Well, I just, you know, I want to. Yes, it will. It will help if you cast bless. Okay, so I'm. Oh, you get that uh, as oh, but if you cast it with the. Yeah, I already did a action bonus action. <laughs> and you can't cast another spell because. You can't cast it as a regular spell because you've already cast I just don't a spell. Lose it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I will cast sacred flame on. Uh, the puppy to Scats is not or okay. the uh, tangle thing, whatever it is. Kill don't the puppy. Don't even worry about and he saved. Yeah. Jerk. Uh, Blurble, you are once again awake. Alright, I'm going to cast a true strike on the uh, thingy above Scats. <laughs> Technically, you cast it on yourself, I believe. Well, as I extend a hand and put a finger at a target in range and I will oh, get oh, insight yes. into the target's defenses. 
Yep. And so on your next attack, you'll have advantage. Yes. Okay. So. So you can just hold on to that, uh, Lyle. So it's just this one back here. You get two there. What do you mean, just that one? No, there's two right next to you. I thought we killed these. No. Losing my mind. Yep. Yep. Losing. Long gone. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> Crit again. You hit for fifteen. Nice. And eleven more, so twenty-six. Okay. Let's see. Something evil in the woods. Uh, Lyle, go ahead and make us uh, a opportunity attack because it's going to try to run away. Oh, sorry, no, it's going to disengage from you and it's going to run away. Douche. The one to the north of Scats is going to disengage and run away. Wait, do I get to hit it? Not if it disengages. If it uses oh. its action to to disengage, then you don't get to hit. Oh, lame. And the one next to Blurble, you guys are going to never believe this, it's going to disengage and run away. Uh, one of them bolts to the north, to, in the, into the woods to the north, and the other two head south. Was that whiskey over ice? Um, Maybe. Uh, you guys spend a few minutes kind of waiting, weapons drawn. Screw that, I want a 20 more feet. And, but after, after some time, a little bit of time passes, you, uh, you don't hear anything in the woods, you don't hear them growling or anything. Anyone want some berries? Are you trying to drug us? <laughs> Hope not. Really, she has no way to know. Blurble Cosby. Do you guys continue on the path? Uh, yeah. After, yeah. after enough time. For the next 10 minutes, I am staying 40 feet in the air. And you guys remember you have healing potions if anyone wants to take the opportunity. Yeah. I'll wait until I really have to use them. I'm going to use one. Yay. So. A little further up the road, you actually come across... Uh, you smell it before you see it. Rounding a bend in the path, you find the body of a male human lying face down in the dirt with a half dozen arrows embedded in his back. Yeah, but does he have a healing potion? Uh, he that says lunch. He does not. Also, I might have read the wrong one. Forget the arrows. He's got what looked like bites from the tentacles you were just attacked with. Tentacles bite? These have like pincers on the end of them. No, so not really bite, but like... Pinch marks? Yeah, well, like, not marks, like chunks of flesh torn out. They don't have the circular scissor-cutting little things that they have in the suckers? No. Is yeah. Pip Yap licking his lips? <laughs> yeah. Oh, not so much. And so is Scats. <laughs> yes. Lunchtime, I bet we may camp here now. As you, as you get anywhere near it, you disturb... The air is suddenly filled with a cloud of, of uh, flies. The body's been here for a couple days at least. Gnats. It, 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 is, a, it is technically a swarm, but you're able to, to swat them away. I'm going to go up sure? and investigate the body. Sure. Um, he's wearing simple homespun clothes and carries no weapon. Wow, this is, this is why you have to read this. This is a paragraph I'm reading from the adventure I adapted this from. Listen to this. His clothes are simple homespun, and he carries no weapon. He holds a strung short bow and a shabby longsword. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he carries yeah, no yeah, weapon. That. Yeah, no, it's, it explicitly says he holds a short bow, and, he, and, a, and a shabby longsword is sheathed at his hip. So I'll, oh. I can even argue maybe the he's, longsword. He's dead now, so he doesn't carry anything. He carries no significant weapons? He, he, he no longer is capable of verb. Fair enough. Well, I mean, I guess if he's dead, he's not actually carrying them. He also has a satchel strung over his uh, his shoulder. Um, you can pretty easily investigate that. There's no, like, roll there. He has uh, ten days of trail rations, a small dagger, some arrows, a single ruby. Lyle, do you want the ruby? It's worth like 40. It's worth like 40 gold. Can, can we get a detect magic I'm on the ruby? Trying. 
Does anyone else magic? have a chance to grab it before I do? I mean, seriously. The detect magic will not reveal any magical properties to the to the ruby. One ruby. There's also it's worth forty gold pieces. Um, there's Already also down. okay. Uh, there's also a rough a roughly sketched map of the local area. And it seems to, like the map you, you already found back at that guy's house, it, it depicts the locations of Greenhall, the Elven City, and uh, as well as the, the Hag's home. I'm going to take those rations. Okay. Uh, Should, can we make sure she doesn't take any of the body? <laughs> I mean, she just grabbed a stew yeah. ingredients. Let's just make she, sure. She can have a legs so... and... I mean, come on, you could take the stomach and cook stuff inside of it, and man, you could have a great feast. See? Emphasis, emphasis on the man. Right? You could probably cook the heart into some sort of, like... You know, it's like when you boil bones to make, like, soup stock stuff, you could probably boil the heart and do the same thing. And have a nice berry reduction with it. <laughs> yeah, throw in the berries. <laughs> The jus of pancreas with roasted heart and a berry reduction. Delicious. Yum. Sounds about right. With a dessert of candied appendix. A little further up the road, once you guys have <laughs> resumed traveling, you guys come across a rather large, like, uh, a, a track, a footprint just off the road. Is it big, Bigfoot? It's bigger than Bigfoot. It's a much bigger foot than Bigfoot. Lyle, you're in the lead, and Scats, you're behind, so why don't you both make uh, nature checks to see if you can identify it? And when I say big, I mean it's like... you-sized. Not like your feet, like... the size of you. Oh, so that's why we're not checking to see if we see it, just to see if we recognize it. I so think it's, it's a foot. Probably. It's a it could be a hand. It's a very large sheet. Lyle, this looks like a dragon foot. Well, female, female okay. sheep. No, I heard about you. No, you didn't. So Lyle comes across what he believes is a, a single solitary. You look around for more, you don't see any. Uh, it looks like a single solitary dragon print. I see an indicator of fat loops. I don't need to point it out. I mean, everyone sees it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is this like... Uh... Is it playing hopscotch or something? Why is there only one print? I don't think that's how you play hopscotch. Well, it's probably how dragons play hopscotch. I don't know. It would be a different scale for them, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, a dragon hop is a, like, multi-mile journey. Like a wings. Hop is pretty irrelevant. That's flying, not hopping. Well, you know... Which way, which way is the footprint going? It's headed north, which is not the direction the path is going. I don't remember if we were warned to stay on the path. You were warned not to go into the forest. We're in the forest. Perfect. Nothing about staying on the path. To the treasure. You can look around for a little while, but uh, you guys can head north, kind of in the general direction the footprint is oriented. But even after some time searching, uh, with the it getting darker and darker, you're not able to... You never do find a second print. You think you're working your way back to where you were on the path? You actually come across that body again. You've actually backtracked on the path. Probably about an hour's journey. Fair enough. We should totally set up camp in the creepy-ass woods. Nothing bad ever happens when we do that. Also, this entire part is predicated on the notion that everyone else would follow you on your dragon hunt. But we'll go with that for the moment. Especially since you didn't find a dragon. Wait, nobody followed me. I'm gonna die. No, no, no. You get back to the path. Some some people went with you. Basically, you got turned around and found your way back to the path, but further behind where you would you've backtracked progress-wise. I blame the elf. Don't go around telling me that the elf is different people. As the light is going, is growing darker, Venora notices something interesting. 
Mistress Blessing, the, the necklace that has like a small, what looks like a magical gemstone surrounded by delicate glass. Um, the gemstone is glowing slightly, just very faintly. You couldn't, if it wasn't almost pitch black now, uh, you wouldn't have been able to see, you would not have seen it at all. Uh, you you don't know what would cause this. Um, you also know that this this magical device is pretty unique. Uh, there aren't a lot. It's not like you know a magical sword where its properties are pretty well understood by magician by by uh, magic oh, wielders. Wants me some semblance of control over my wild magic. Seems to be acting up. What? No. Hey. I just heard wild magic and acting up. I ran. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hello, party. Uh, this thing is glowing, and also, um, it doesn't normally do that. I will detect that magic. Oh yeah. By the way, I stopped my headphones on point. <laughs> you detect magic. The thing is that this. This particular artifact has always pinged. Like, I don't list things you know about when you say you detect magic, but um, this thing always comes back as being very, as being infused with, with magical energies. They don't, but that doesn't seem any, it's not like it's grown stronger or anything. It's just, uh... Can I tell if it's being influenced by anything? Uh, you don't sense anything else within the 30 feet other than that sort of general tangled feeling you get. Okay. Proceeding along the path, making up the ground you guys lost, or uh, it's, it, well, it is probably only about six o'clock in the evening. Uh, it is probably the darkness that you'd normally find at midnight or so, except on a, on a night where the there's no uh, moon. But you, with torchlight, you can keep going. I, I can see in the dark. I, I'm saying we pass oh. on. Yeah, it's not magical or anything, so normal dark vision would apply. Okay, sounds like you're pressing on. Yeah, you're pressing yeah, on. Now. If we find any place that looks kind of safe, though, let us know. Well, coincidentally, you might have. You round a bend in the path and continue to a large clearing. The ever-present canopy is open here, lending you your first view of the sky. There is a small cottage of near, neatly stacked logs with a roof of tidily arranged shingles grown over with moss on the far side of the glade. An open cook pit is in the center of the clearing over which a large cooking pot hangs from a tripod of iron rods. Almost as if they knew that body was laying there. <laughs> Bubbling and sending delicious smelling steam into the air. The warmth and light of the fire warms you to the bones, banishing the forest's oppressive gloom. You also notice, interestingly, the rain, the rain that's been pervasive this entire time you've been traveling, it doesn't appear to be raining inside this glade. Does there seem like there's a nice spot that's at least 30 feet away that we could maybe bury the uh, hairpin thing for a little bit? You could put it back on the trail. Or you could go like 30 feet off the truck. Sorry, maybe you didn't know it was 30 feet. By now you've worked out that it's that it has a 30 foot range. But but what if I just load, put it in my bag of holding? It's a magical extra dimensional space. Roll an arcana check. I don't arcana. I know, but it's your idea. And Apparently I don't either. God, this is a bad idea. Nine, it's a brilliant idea, it'll always work. You know what, it really was a clever idea, so... I'm gonna say, well, I'll tell you what, Lyle thinks it will work. I don't know what that says, but... I think I just discovered Lyle had a bag of holding. Yeah, yeah. He, he keeps forgetting, or it just hasn't been relevant. No, I've had it for a while, I just don't tell him. <laughs> right, he, he kind of wants people to forget. It works in my favor. Plus, he's never told me he's looking in it to get something out, so I, I still have the option of make it a, making it a bag of devouring. I... <laughs> there is a book of on siege warfare in there. Okay. And my trade bars. Yep, those were definitely in there. One of which I was able to use, so... 
Uh, so yes, yeah, so you guys have an open glade where it's not raining, where the sky is dark and, and uh, it looks like dusk, which is time appropriate. There is a, a small hovel and there's a large cooking pot out front. Gats is definitely getting a whiff of something yummy. Can I do a detect magic? Yeah, go ahead. Well, you don't have to do anything. You detect magic. The hovel's a little more than 30 feet away. There's some cover you could try to get closer. Or you could just openly explore the clearing. You don't see anybody, but there is a what seems like a, a fire that's been tended to, so... You assume somebody's around. Um, I will approach a little bit closer to uh, detect again. Okay. Why don't you uh, make a stealth roll to see if you get up there quietly? Okay, that's not horrible. <laughs> uh, you find your way to... You're, you're about... You're just at about 30 feet away from the cabin. You're small, so you're hiding behind a you know, large boulder um, that was in the clearing. And uh, yeah, you definitely sense there's there's some there's some magic going on inside there, including because I believe you detect the school as well. There's definitely it, it, it includes magic from the school of necromancy. Oh, okay. Fine. I see dead people. From where you are, you can also see again that is, there's firewood stacked neatly along the wall of the cabin. Uh, you can make out that there's some flickering light shining through the front windows and uh, small amounts of smoke coming out of a small chimney attached to the far side of the, the building. You also think you hear something moving behind the cabin. You're kind of on the, like, the front of the cabin, you're to the right of it, like, not to the right of the cabin, but front right. And you, th you think that you hear movement behind, behind it. I will try to signal, signal the group. Uh, they're they're watching you from cover. Uh, what are you what are you trying to signal them to do? To join you or? Um, that I I can hear some stuff happening or make a motions and I can tell that there's some stuff happening and maybe approach quietly. If only we learned semaphore. Yeah, there's so much about astrophysics I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a lot of stealth checks that go awry right now. I will progress forward, but at very slow speed. I'm going to get my stealth on and get up there. Well, once you make the stealth roll, since you're... Oh, yeah, 11, 11's all right. 11. You, you get up to blurble with that. You don't think anybody would have heard you. No obvious noises. And Blurble can now relay anything quietly. Anything that didn't come through with the uh, hand signals. Are you doing anything else once you have that information, or are you going to wait for... There's not there's not so much cover that everyone can sneak up under, co like, with cover. Your, like, Scats could probably get up there since she's a small creature, but... So what's going on up here again? There's a hovel with a big cooking pot out front. There appears to be some sort of stew. Although it could be a chowder, you're not close enough to tell. Oh, okay. Uh, so don't get too excited. Blurble decided to be rogue since you were silent and snuck up there. She There's definitely some magic, some not so nice magic perhaps inside. And there's some sort of noises she's heard in the back. It's some sort of movement. But she couldn't, <laughs> she, she couldn't be more specific than that. And I just remember that I have uh, telepathy up to 30 feet. Okay. I guess so I can talk to the group, apparently, too. <laughs> we, uh, we could always just burn it down. Magic missile. Is there darkness? There's not. Damn. He'll only cast it into the darkness. So, there's something going on around the other side of the cabin? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna walk to the other side of the cabin. Okay. You're gonna stick to like the edge of the clearing? Sure. Okay. You can see behind there, there is a cage. There's a large cage suspended from an iron post jutting out from the side of the cabin. Inside are two humans. Well, do they have anything of value? They don't appear to. 
Okay. I will walk up to the cage carefully. Sure. Why don't you make a stealth roll? Just to, cr- to close the distance between you and the cabin. Okay. You're you're fairly quiet as you emerge from the. You, they notice you when you're about halfway there, and they both look. Uh, they both kind of grab the bars and look in your direction. That they're they immediately start making hand gestures. Basically, ones like stay down, stay down, like waving his hand. Neither of them make a noise, but just waving his hand in a manner you interpret as keep down, and the other one's putting his finger to his lips, uh, suggesting to be quiet. I do both of those. So we, so we have speak no evil and see no evil. Where's hear no evil? Tillman is all the way at the hovel next to these two humans. Lyle and Blurble are kind of just about 25, 30 feet from the the home, the front of the home, off to the right a little bit. And uh, Venoran and Pipiap and Scats are back at, and Fluffy are back at uh, the path that I'm, led into the clearing. I'm convinced I'm staying, that this is the hag's house. I'm staying back at the path because I know that if I get any closer and smell that stew anymore, I'm just not going to be able to hold myself back. Well, we've established it might be chowder. Especially since it's made of people. The best stew ever? Yes. As you, as the two of you are out front, suddenly the door to the cottage opens and rather a rather surprised-looking elderly human woman stands in the doorway. She appears to have noticed Blurble and Lyle. She's looking right at you. My goodness, you gave me quite a fright she exclaims, clutching the front of her shirt. We certainly don't get visitors around these parts very often. Did anyone check to see if this building was made out of gingerbread? <laughs> I didn't lick it on my way by, I'm sorry. Please come sit by the fire and warm yourselves. Mm. And she's going to go and take a seat on their... You can see now that there are like like half log benches around the cooking pot. Okay. How big is the cooking pot? You know, like when there's like a a, a movie, like a witch stirring a, ju- a big cauldron, that size. Oh, fun! Oh, perfect. Crap. Probably like a good like uh, full two foot diameter and and maybe like two or three feet deep. She asks if you'd like to take a dip in her hot tub. The answer is no. Would you mind holding these carrots? Gladly. I do not go into the cabin. <laughs> okay. I am going to talk to the uh, prisoners outside. Okay. Yeah, you're 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 right up there, so you can talk to them quietly. I'm going to ask them what's going on. Why are they here? Who are they? Blah blah blah. And they tell you that they're from the village, from Stilton's Crossing. Their uh, their party came here looking for. And I've forgotten the NPC name, and since I have a habit of changing them in time, uh, let's see here. Steve. Steve, right. Steve. Yeah, the first guy. Yeah. Uh, oh, Halvin. They came here looking for Halvin. They don't know that you know all this, but they, they very loosely recap. We came into the woods looking for uh, Halvin, somebody from our village who, won- who, I, who went into the woods. And I go, yeah, 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 I know that. Why are you here in this cage? And they tell you uh, they tell you that the hag captured them. This is the hag's house. Yes, be very careful. We'll be right back after we kill the hag. Are you gonna like step away from them? When you yeah, say that? I say I say I don't have a, a way to uh, get you out, but we'll try to figure it out. And as you kind of step away, maybe to like go sneak around the side of the house or whatever you're gonna do, whatever you yeah. choose to do next, they're gonna kind of like they're gonna look a little scared and say, you know. Don't leave, don't leave. But it's kind of obvious here. And I take a step closer and I say, there's a group of us. We're going to take care of this. And I step away to go toward uh, the rest of the group. Sure. And you can, you can probably hear around that point that there's a conversation. You hear a new person, like a woman's voice out front. Reminds you of your grandmother. Very, like, uh, soothing voice. And... You, you know, you can kind of make your way around the side of the cabin, perhaps, so that you can see without without being seen. Clearly not referring to either of my grandmothers. 
neither of which had anything I would even remotely describe as stupid. Or mine. Your characters. Somebody you would find soothing. That's who it reminds each of you of. I'm going to stay out of this conversation. Around the front, uh, Lyle and Blurble, you've been... She, she addressed you directly, like, not by name, but, you know, she obviously knows you're there. Uh, she goes and sits on this, like, half-log uh, bench next to the cooking fire and stirs it a bit. Nice-looking, you know, just uh, a, a nice old lady wearing a, a simple floral print dressing gown over a... Or like with a like an apron over it. Is any of this made from human skin? Doesn't appear to be. Her hair is tied back in a neat bun held in place by a foot long bone hairpin. Ooh, ooh, ooh. that's another fifty GP right there. <laughs> and, and I, I ask her. <laughs> um, I ask her if she's vegetarian too. <laughs> and she says that she just can't stand eating food that doesn't have that doesn't have some delicious meat in it. I'm gonna agree with that. But Here, okay. try some. So, who is in the cabin? Nobody you know of. Oh, nobody's gone in. Okay, Not everyone's standing outside. Yep. Lyle and Blurble were out. Were hiding behind like a, a boulder or a stump or something uh, when this woman came out and made it clear that she knew they were there and invited them to come eat. I see food being offered. And I trot up. Uh, and she she pulls a bowl. Can I, get, can I get Skets' attention at all? So Skets is walking across the clearing now, and you're kind of around the side of the building. You can get her attention, but depending on how Skats reacts, like if she looks at you, then it might give away that your presence to this other person. If she doesn't already know you're there. Gotcha. So I will sort of point toward the direction of the woman and then give the dead universal death line, you know, the finger across slip. the neck. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm going to take that as if someone points to someone and makes the universal, like, across the neck death kind of symbol, or I assume that's the universal one you're talking about there. Yes. That would be my cue to uh, fly into a rage and attack her. Awesome. Oh, dear God. Okay. So uh, Skats is is walking across kind of uh, this clearing, sniffing the air, waiting, you know, just kind of imagining the, the feast she's about to enjoy. And then she sees Tillman give the finger across the throat slashy symbol. And then she just kind of goes red and charges at this woman. Yes. Yes. All right. Fun to make sure I understood. I understood fully. And she yeah, is going to see an innocent old woman. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Perhaps. She sees you charging. Lyle and Blurble, how did you did you guys stay undercover or did you like did you approach? Did you just stand up but not go any closer? I was I was under the impression that I wound up sitting on a bench. Well, that's fine. That's what it sounded like too at first. So yeah, you guys are—you haven't accepted the food yet, but no, <laughs> okay. no, no, no. And in front oh, of I you, I want to save it for scats. In front of you, this woman's appearance just kind of just changes, and she, her her skin within just a moment turns green. Instead, you find yourself face to face with someone actually like my grandmother. <laughs> I remember watching an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. My grandmother came in and said, why is that man yellow? And I said, oh, he's a... I didn't want to say android. She didn't know android. I said, he's a robot. I said, oh. So from that point on, every character that would come on screen, is he a robot? Is he a robot? Is he a robot? <laughs> Just put on uh, Battlestar Galactica and say yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And they have a plan, although you never find out what it is. Unless you watch the movie, The Plan. <laughs> Greatest crossover ever. No, no, no. There actually is a Battlestar Galactica movie called The Plan. Yeah. It just still doesn't make a lot of but, sense. Yes. Yeah, so uh, a picture of, of this woman's uh, loose uh, approximate appearance is now on the screen for your enjoyment. Um, much less friendly. 
Okay, I've not seen that. I have to go see that now. I would like to point out that there is a house right behind us. We should just find a way to lift it up and drop it on her. Ooh, take her shoes off first. No, you do the shoes <laughs> after, off. otherwise she doesn't die. Yeah, make it. <laughs> Train hit her! <laughs> oh, sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned that. No, no, no. <laughs> Hey, do I get to hit her now? So, Scats, as you as you get up there and you're, you're getting your axe ready to hit her, she kind of sighs and rolls her eyes at you and says, guess I'll have to carve your eyes out, too. Not if I carve your eyes out first and put them in my breakfast cereal. Oh, dear God, it's getting creepy now. Uh, roll right. initiative. Scats, Scats is going to get, like, an upfront attack. That's going to be, like, the surprise round because I feel like all of you were surprised by Scats. I mean, it's not that surprising she'd do this, but, you know, the exact timing can be difficult. I, I was going to say, none of this surprises us, just the timing. Actually, it was actually <laughs> what I was hoping for. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll, I'll have Tillman. Tillman we're going we're gonna to do a surprise round where just uh, Scats and Tillman act. And to be honest with you, the hag's probably, the hag is going to act too. And then that one turn later, everyone will be in on the fight. And I'd just like to briefly remind everybody, for no particularly obvious reason, that um, I need a 20-foot radius space At all times. to occupy something in. Uh, so if you're on all sides of the hag, I can't do that. No, he's got a trick he'd like to try. And Inappropriate? Scats just broke the 20-foot rule, which is different than the 10-foot rule. Well, no, it's fine. As long as you're all on one side, I can, I can oh, cast oh, it yeah. behind her. All right, Scats, go ahead and uh, make your this charging attack that you've. Twenty-six for ten plus an extra two, so twelve. Plus you Damage. crit. That's a crit. Oh, get a plus two twenty-two. Crit. Holy crap! You got a second attack in you. Yes. Fourteen. Does fourteen hit? It does not. It, it does not. What do you mean it doesn't? Doesn't hit. All right. Tillman, you are you are expecting this when she goes charging in a rage. You kind of do a little fist pump, like yeah, and then uh, you step up to the corner. <laughs> uh, you get a little bit of you get li literally little cover because it's Lyle and Blurble. Oh, they're little cover. Stop it, you. I cast Spiritual Weapon. Uh, next to the hag? Uh, yeah. Okay, you made an attack. You rolled an 18. That will hit, and that will do 7 damage. And then Sacred Flamer. Sacred Flamer. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, she'll fi you'll finally get to land one of those. Oh, wow. And it was quite a lot of damage. Because it scales at five, right? Yep. Okay, the hag is gonna do some magic shit. Oh, okay. Don't like it. Uh oh. And on the next turn, out of the we woods, kind of in a way, behind Venorin. I'm guessing she knew I was there somehow. Oh yeah. You guys were carrying that bone for right up until you just got there. Uh, Pip Yap's back there with you too. Out of the the woods, the, the clearing, out of the edge of the clearing, rather. Those those things that were attacking you earlier. Yeah, they're back. Oh. Yay. Which at some point one of you worked out. Hey, do you guys think those were displacer beasts? I think those might have been displacer beasts. Holy crap! We just fought displacer beasts. That's what Dan thought, but I wasn't sure. Okay, so front of the order, Pipyap has Pipyap's gonna fly over to the one that just appeared behind him and try to sting it. He rolls a fourteen, which oh nope, that's not gonna hit. Blurble, everyone's everyone's active now. I'm gonna um, do a uh, true strike on the hag. All right. You have advantage if she's still alive next round, which she may not be once Scats goes. Uh, Scats. Uh, 
Uh, well, I would hit the Hague with my Great Axe, except I got kicked off World 20 again. I will find your character sheet then. Okay, Great Axe. You rolled a... I've ad- uh, you have advantage? I have advantage, yeah. Okay, then you rolled a 23, and that is definitely going to hit her. So you did 14 damage. Plus the 2. Plus the 2, so 16. You probably don't need to re-roll that. No, that's fine. Okay, so 16 damage, and then you swing again. Uh, you roll a 15, which is not going to hit her. Okay. Uh, Lyle. Okay. Step in. And attack. 16 hit. A 16 is not going to hit her. What? So it's 17 or 18. All right, Displacer Beast is going to step, uh, actually it doesn't even need to step up. It's going to attack Vinorn. It rolls a 15. Equal. Okay, so then 11 damage and the other one's gonna miss. One is going to split off from the group. 5, 10, 15, 20, no. 25, 30. No. stop counting. Oh, he's got a... <laughs> Well, he's got 40 foot movement and also he uh, he's got a 10 foot reach. So attack on Tillman, 17. Yeah, that hit. 11 damage and a crit miss. One is going to step up behind Scats and attack her twice. Uh, the first one's a nine. That's going to miss. The second one is a 22, eight hit points, which leaves you at 19. Tillman. Okay, I will do a Cure Wounds on myself. Actually, what is the action of drinking a potion? Is that an action? That's an action. Then I will drink a potion. That's 2d4 plus 2? Correct. I should start handing out the... There's also greater healing potions, which are just 4d4 plus 4. It, it scales nicely, and then there's like mega potions, which are 66, 64 I have six. one greater healing that I've been sitting on. That's got to be uncomfortable. Yeah, but warm. Exactly. Yeah. And I move the uh, thing over to attack. The, I move the uh, spiritual weapon over to attack the... Sure. Uh, Lyle has to kind of dodge. He flies yeah. over his shoulder. All right, go ahead and make your attack. Mm. Can you roll again? Okay. Oh, wait. Doesn't matter. No. Nope. You are going to miss. Oh, I forgot these things are lame. Damn it. Okay, the uh, the hag is uh, not looking so well for hit points. She's going to disappear. Oh, cheater. Vinorin. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to twin my spell and firebolt. The... One behind me and the one going after uh, after Tillman. Since apparently they don't have to be within five feet of each other. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, no, they just they just both have to be within range. So as long yeah, as... I, can, I, I was playing that side by side for freaking I don't know like six games in a row. If you read it quickly, it, it makes sense. What's the range on that? Oh, that's like one hundred and twenty feet or something ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. All right, the first one will definitely hit. You're going to do 10 damage to it. And the second one is going to miss. pip is going to try and stab the one behind Venorin again. He is going to crit miss. Blurble. Here you go, pip He was really helpful last session. This session, he's been kind of miss. I think he got into the line. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Eldritch Blast um, with the one that's nearest to Tillman. That is going to miss. Scats. Uh, the situation, since this will help you as well as uh, anyone listening to the podcast later on. One, thanks for listening. Two, uh, there's a cluster of people in front of this, uh, what is clearly the hag's house. The hag has disappeared, but there are uh, displacer beasts attacking them. One is attacking the, the cluster. The other one is attacking Tillman around the side of the house. And then back at the edge of the clearing, Benorin... Uh, Blurble's familiar Fluffy and uh, the imp Pipyap are fighting another Displacer Beast. So Scats with her Great Axe is going to swing and roll 
She is going to hit. Uh, does, uh, let's see. You rolled a 14 for damage. Plus the two, so. So 16. Yeah. And then she's going to swing a second time. And crit miss. Wow, well, I get to reroll. I am in. Oh, yes. She's a half inch. She, uh, wow. A second crit miss. Well, so yeah, advantage? it's not a perpetual reroll. Yeah, it is. Doesn't uh, does she have advantage anyway? Yeah. Oh, I apologize. You rolled a 12 and just flat out missed. Yeah, so technically that first one you didn't crit miss, so I can't give you the 25 on the second. All right, well, the net result is the, the same. You still walloped it. What uh, about Lyle? the first attack? All right. Oh, the first attack, you got it, okay. Yeah, yeah. The first attack was a, was a hit. And a crit. Maybe. I'm going to run okay. over to the one near Tillman. Yep. And I will rapier it in the face. Sounds wrong. I'm but... assuming an eight misses. You would be assuming correctly. Now it has two targets. Tillman. An 11. That should miss you. That's a miss. And uh, Lyle is 16. God damn it. 10 damage. Half damage. All right. Scats. It rolls a crit miss. And then it rolls a 12. Both of those are going to miss you. Yep. Venorin. 15. Equal. Nine damage. And an eight, so that will miss. Tillman. I attack it with my spiritual weapon as a bonus act. Probably miss with a ten. That is going to miss. And then I will attack it with spiritual fire, or whatever it's called. Sacred flame. Sacred flame. Fail, fail, fail. Yes! It fails, and it takes 13 radiant damage. Venorn. Using my last level 2 to levitate. Okay, you're levitated. Pipiap is going to try to sting it. It hits. And it has to make a con save, which it does. So it takes the... I should have made... Sorry, I should have made Pipiap one you could see. He rolled a 19. And he did seven damage. He also does a, a poison damage, but it's saved against the poison. So it's going to take seven normal and three poison. So ten. Blurble. I'm going to Elder's Blast the one nearest to Scats. Oh, that is going to miss. Mm. Scats, still loading? Still loading. Okay, you swing your great axe. You are going to hit. Ooh. And you do 15 damage plus two is 17. You're rolling so high nice. on damage, I'm not like, I'm not asking you if you're going to reroll, but. No, well, 14 and 15, there's not much point, right? Yeah. The second one, you're going to hit again. Oh, see, see, I'm glad I saved it because you rolled a 15, which uh, that's going to hit. But oh, you only rolled, you rolled four damage. So I will reroll that one. And you do uh, 11 instead, plus two is 13. Two solid hits on that one. Lyle. All right, so I'm just gonna hit the one I hit. Well, tried to hit. 23 hit. Yes, it does. And the sword counts as threatening, so I'm going to use my sneak attack bonus for a total of 14 damage. It is, that one is now dead. Yay! Ooh. They can die! Stats! You get attacked twice. But the second one is going to hit it, roll to 23, and it's going to do 10 additional damage to you. You're fine. Does you're getting, she, does you're she get half? Is it bludgeoning, piercing, or whatever damage? Oh, yes, it is. Add five. Yay. I've been on your 20 feet in the air. I am 20 feet in the air. Okay. I have 10, 15, 20. Well, then this one's going to have to run over and attack Hillman. Does, does he get an opportunity from uh, Pipyup? Uh, Pipyup, I'm assuming, is diving. Yeah, screw it. Pipyup makes an opportunity attack. Woohoo! Oh! <laughs> He hits, so actually that guy did not did not go. 
Sure. Uh, and Apparently I'm looking for nothing. While you don't find them, you do have a locksmith with you. And once you're confident you don't care about making too much noise, you can also just smash the the, the cages open. Oh, okay. In short, you're able to free those two men. Hey, congratulations. Wait, why are we doing that? Because they were there. But how much money do we get for it? Now, Scats, Scats went, was on guard duty out front, but obviously everyone knew that was also a bit of a way to just be with us alone with the stew. <laughs> Which none of us wanted to see. Uh, yeah, as you're as you're mixing it, uh, you're you're stirring yeah. it. Yeah, you see like an eyeball float to the top of the the stew at some point, and we'll just we'll just not address what you do at that point because <laughs> we all know what happens at that point. Yes. She's having dinner. <laughs> yep. Boy. Inside. You guys find basically a very stereotypical witch's setup. There are potions and alchemical ingredients. Tillman, you see what looks like a very interesting, colorful, what looks like like wallpaper. And then you realize it's dozens and dozens of small wings. And I think at this point, your character, having had suspicions but not able to place them earlier, is able to work out that these, they look like they might be butterfly wings at first, but they're too big and they're, they're not structured the same. And you think they probably belong to pixies. Oh, she is a bad, bad person. Yeah, so so those are like, there's a whole wall just like covered in them. Quick, everybody clap. Hey, so, someone in the uh, chat room wants to know what is Scats' archetype for barbarian or whatever the, the chosen uh, thing is. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Uh, let me open my book here. I have it beside the me. Eagle, You're on the spot. Or something. Eat, <laughs> eat anything is pretty much as called. Um, um, I like that movie. Uh, Tillman. Oh yeah, Berserker. Wings. Uh, Berserker. Those pixie wings. They worth they anything? Worth money. Um, I believe they are sometimes used in some potion making but I don't know to what level they need to be preserved. Anyone have a problem if I start collecting them? Good. Okay, so Lyle starts peeling peeling pixie wings off the wall and making a... Because that's a hobby. Making a nice <laughs> nice pile of them to uh, to bring. Some of them have been there a while. They're, they're very brittle and they, they break as you pull them off, but some of them are more, for, are, are more recent and you're able to you're able to acquire those fresh pixie wings. Fresh pixie wings. Mm. I'm assuming freshness counts. You guys do a, a search. Blurble Poi does like a detect magic, maybe at some point. Detect magic. Yeah. Among the things that set off Blurble's uh, magic detector are a necklace with orange orbs three different potions a ring a cape and some boots Ooh. do you guys want to spend an hour in the creepy witch's house or do you want to like head back and, and maybe try to figure some of the stuff out on the way I vote we head back it probably takes Lyle a little bit of time to uh collect all the pixie wings. There are a lot of them. Well, they, she found a lot of stuff. Don't we need to find her and off her? Well, that's a good question, too. She hasn't shown back up. Oh, yeah. Final touch. Light the house on fire. I agree with that. And did we find any papers or books or anything? Oh, yeah. Plenty of, like, creepy stuff, talking about incantations and and things of that nature. It also looks like this place has been here for a long time. Did we find hobby any projects items? you can use with pixie wings? Nothing specifically related to the pixie wings. Did we find anything that looks like personal items from the people that came into the woods? There are, and actually, when you, since you can talk freely with the two people in the back, he one of them very somberly tells you that there were four of them when they first got here. And you maybe make the mental connection to the stew. So whose eyeball did I eat? 
Um, yeah, they, one of them vomits when you ask that. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I was about to. <laughs> In real life. Because it was extra tasty and she wants to know if they had a family. <laughs> she just loves blue eyes. <laughs> Yeah, them genes. Uh, so yeah, so that's the when they relayed their story to you, it, you know, it lines up with everything else. They came looking for the guy. They they tracked him here. When they asked about Halvin's whereabouts and apologized for their their trespasses, she basically said, "Oh, he was very disagreeable that she'd gotten rid of him." Uh, they weren't sure what that meant, but they soon learned as they watched two of their comrades turned into a witch's stew. Yeah, it's called indigestion. Well, we probably should take these guys back and, and all that stuff and light the place on fire. Two out of three of those make sense to me. What doesn't make sense to you? Bringing the guys back. They can carry some of your stuff. Oh, makes sense now. Yeah. You know, if they get too much trouble, I'll just eat them. It's fine. He's got to spend some time looking for a, a cookbook. To go food. Exactly. Forget yeah, bringing we'll, it to your door. They'll they'll walk to your house. We'll take some of those books and stuff. I mean, it never hurts. Sure. In case you want to learn the dark arts. Or you have a bag of holding. Take it all. Oh, that's true. You get the bag of holding. There's there's no. I don't go crazy with weight requirements. So yeah, so after resigning yourself to the fact that you're not sure what you could, where you could go next, you figure, well, destroy her, destroy her resources, destroy her, her, you know, little lab here, take anything that's not nailed down that looks like it might be worth something. Uh, for some reason, collect pixie wings, and hey, they could be worth money. Fair enough. You no, know, she may come after us as we're leaving the forest. True. And, uh, yeah, and you guys start heading back. It's it's later at night, but you guys all kind of feel like none of you want to spend a night in this forest. So even if you have to travel to the wee hours of the morning, it's probably worth it. Correct. Do we, oh. it, does the uh, cabin burn? The cabin will burn without even too much difficulty. Fireball, fireball, fireball. Yeah, and maybe, like, you guys probably have some, like, lamp oil or somewhere. Somewhere's tucked away in one of your adventuring kits. Some lamp oil. As you're walking, it, it takes you, it's going to take you a number of hours of traveling, but that's enough time for you to, it's somewhere along the line, you will, you will stop and um, take enough of a rest that you guys can take a look at these items you've collected. Yay. Item number one is a necklace of fireballs. Ooh. You take a bead, you throw it somewhere, fireball. Nothing wrong with and, that. And they are used up once they are <laughs> thrown? Yes, they, they do not regenerate. Uh, it's going to start its life with six beads. There is a potion of giant strength. It's from a fire giant. There's like a, a, a toenail inside of this potion that kind of glistens like it's on fire. Ooh, fun. When you ingest this, you gain the strength of a fire giant and your strength becomes 25 for the duration of the effect. Nice. It seemed like a scatsy thing. Indeed it bit. is. Especially since that makes your modifier plus 12? No, plus, oh. uh, sorry, no, plus 7. But Either still. way. Yeah, still. Also, Scats is the only one who drinks something with a fire giant toenail in it. True. Yeah, probably. True. There is a potion of climbing. Just consume it, she'd order it that one. Yeah. And I have extra toenail. There's a potion of climbing. You drink this, you gain a climb speed. You can walk up and down walls and so forth. Smile. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that already, but I could be better. Uh, there's a potion of water breathing. Drink this, you can breathe underwater. Probably nobody specifically that would go for it, but having it as a party resource makes sense. Sure. There is a, a ring. One of you puts it on and you, your feet feel lighter. You eventually work out. It is a ring of uh, feather falling. Yeah. You can basically cast feather fall, which means you can fall off something and 
I'll have to check the book. I, I can't remember if it only helps you or if you can do, like normal feather falling, you can cast it on like six people around you. I'm not sure if the ring has that effect, but. If it's the, the item's regular typically one, just one the, person. The regular one is um, one person per level above its base level. Okay. And it can be cast as a reflex. Right, reaction, yeah. Okay. Uh, there is... There's the cape. Boots of striding. Those are the boots. While you wear these boots, your walking speed becomes 30. Unless your walking speed is already higher. And your speed isn't reduced if you're encumbered or wearing heavy armor. In addition, you can jump three times the normal distance. Oh, fun. The Cape of the Mountebank. Mountebank. This cape smells faintly of brimstone. While wearing this cape, you can use it to cast the Dimensional Door spell as an action. It's basically a short-range teleport. This property of the cape can't be used again until the next dawn. When you disappear, you leave behind a cloud of smoke, and you appear in a similar cloud of smoke at your destination. The smoke lightly obscures the space you left and the space you appear in, and it dissipates at the end of your next turn. Nice. How will we divvy this up? Some of these seem like they could really help multiple people. I'll take the potion of climbing. I'll take the strength potion. I think I might be the slowest person walking speed. Your halflings and your gnomes would be at 25 normally. But okay. your but Lyle can use his cunning action to dash. And I mean, I'm, I'm a proponent of splitting things up in a sensible way, but also in a way that everyone gets, you know, something. I'll take the ring of feather fall if anyone else wants to play it. You do spend a lot of time in the air. <laughs> I do. I do. It's, it's the best way to run, straight up. You want? Yeah, so I'm fine with Burble having the boots. It sounds good. Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> can I use the cape? It sounds like it will be objects. I can That's theoretically so- use it as a as a way to get people off the battlefield that are dying. Once. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that's a good point. Um, you can also put something on the battlefield suddenly and miraculously. <laughs> Scott, you need to be over there. Pa- what is the action of its use? Is it an action? I believe it's an action. I'll, I'll get you the relevant text. Or if you, uh, do you have the DMG? Uh, I don't I mean do. I, I don't mean in yeah. front of you. I just mean yeah, yeah, yeah. I do own it, so I can look it up. Makes sense for someone who's not a halfling or a gnome to have it, because otherwise. You know. Right. If you can transport your size or smaller, then if one of the halflings had it, you'd only be able to do the um, blurble. Yeah, but if one of the halflings had it, that's still half the damn party. That's true. No, it's but <laughs> there's a little more flexibility this way. So that leaves the water breathing and the uh, the necklace of fireball. Yeah, that's it. I already have a necklace and fireball, so somebody else probably could go get it. Uh, the water breathing, I think, is a community resource as needed. That's that's one of those situations where, like, oh, you have a lake and there's something at the bottom. Like, it's unlikely you're going to need to use that in the middle of combat. Or if it is, if you're getting, like, drowned and one of you survives, that's not the best Yeah, but how do outcome. you drink a potion while drowning? So many like, you carefully. want emergency fireballs? I will if no one else wants My mic was way high. I will if no one else wants it. I don't see myself doing anything responsible with it. <laughs> I don't see Scats being able to use them responsibly in the heat of battle. Does Venoran, Venoran, do you run out of spells often, or how, how does your spell... Uh... I, I tend not to uh, exhaust all my spell slots, but I, I do have a limited number. I have I wonder two if level be- threes, three level twos, and four level ones. So I wonder if, because you do know Fireball, if you would actually be the one best to use them. Will it clash with my existing necklace? Will I go with my shoes? Will I have to get a new purse? I'm not making elf comments right now. I'm really <laughs> not. I mean, I don't think it's a magical necklace. It's magical beads that are on a necklace. Correct. Right. Okay. So I could I could make it beads of another variety, perhaps a bracelet. 
I just feel like in case we need to throw him and he has us do any kind of a check or anything, since you already cast Fireball, one, it would help you in case you run out of spells, and two, you know the spell well enough to be able to place them correctly. It also, it does give you the flexibility to cast it at a higher level. Um, it's it's just like when you're using your spell slots, it doesn't scale linearly. So, you, like, if you throw one bead, it casts a level three fireball. If you throw two, it casts a level four. And you yeah. can... Now, of course, it, again, it's the same as with your spell slots. It doesn't... It, it scales annoyingly small because if you can last two rounds, well, now you're doing 16 d6 over two rounds instead of, like, 96 in one round, but it still gives you that flexibility. You can also, and this says it in the book, you can chuck the whole necklace. Oh, nice. Nice. All right, yeah, I'll hang on to it. Yeah, I think Scats would probably try to get a big cauldron, fill it with cold she's stew, she's, she's chuck a fireball in the middle of it. Now you're oh, yeah. pasta. And then, ca- and then drink a potion of water wave. breathing. Yeah. Right. And then dunk her so head in the stew. Beans. There are six, and they don't regenerate, so... You know, I figured it's your... I'm saving this spell slot for something else, or I've run out of spell slots, and I can toss these in an emergency. You gotta imagine if Scats drank the water potion, just dunk her head in stew. Yes! 